I was like, how there's hey, a hey, you oh. all sit down. You're sitting at the grown up table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella, and as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. And I'm on time this time. Yes. Today <laughs> we're talking some, about something special for me. Um, real quick, before we even start talking about the Batman, this is going to be a spoiler rific show. So make sure you do yourself a favor. If you haven't watched it Spoilers. yet, just like and subscribe this video. Or if you're on Facebook watching it right now, hit like and then just come back to it later after you've done the right thing and watched it. But yes, this is going to be a very Batman spoiler episode. Now, I do have one thing real quick, though, Jesse. Sorry to interrupt you. But, yes. you know, even though, like, I get the whole spoilers thing, this movie doesn't really actually have any like spoilers per se it's just more about like how the film goes like there, there's no like reveal there's no twist there's no mystery like you know everything throughout the movie that's happening um, yes yeah, so I, mean, I thought that was kind of interesting that there wasn't really like anything that was like ooh, you know like mm -hmm. i don't know well, does that make I sense mean what i'm saying yeah, no, but there are certain elements, I guess, for the more who people who've read the comic books that sure, we were surprised sure. to see in this film. And that, we'll, yeah, I get that. But it's yeah. like when, when people think of spoiler, they think like Walking Dead spoiler, you know, or M. Night like, Shyamalan movie spoiler. And there wasn't any of – it's not like that type of spoiler. In no, this no, no. I think one of the things that made this movie such a fantastic film is the simplicity to it with its complex – uh, murder mis mystery, uh, conspiracy, and all that stuff. But we'll, but we'll get, get into that into soon. That. We'll get more into that. But for right now, let's bring out our guests. We have two guests that are on be on the show today. But right now, we only have uh, one of them at the moment. Destin will be joining us very soon. But let's please bring on uh, everybody's favorite, Darth. Everyone, give it up for Darth. There he yes. is. I like how he's going out of his way to act grumpy and not excited or happy or anything. Like, he's just that guy that would just shit in someone's cereal and not even care about it. Damn. I'm sorry. You, uh, are you talking to me? I'm watching the Green Lantern. A good yeah, movie. I know you are. Darn. <laughs> Why don't you? I'll tell you what. Ryan Reynolds responds to a lot of his fans on social media. Why don't you send him a message and ask him what he felt about that movie? I you know, know he was what he thought about it. And it's not a good movie. So that tells you how much I despise this movie. Um, I did like the race car uh, power, even though people thought that was stupid. I thought that was actually really cool. Uh, that was one of my favorite things. That and when he had like that double like ship mounted Gatling gun, that was pretty cool. It's not a Gatling gun, but you know what I mean. So you know, a couple cool highlights from it. But yeah, it's it, not a good movie, Darth. So well, no, it isn't. <laughs> but. But today, let's talk about the Batman. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, uh, some of the things, um, uh, the films, editing, cinematography, and music. And why I want to talk about this is so important because for many reasons. And John even wanted to bring this up. Yeah. But for me, this movie, the these elements is what made it feel like it was in the comic book and a dark score. That made me feel like, and, and you saw the bat, the the set of his uh, his uh, penthouse in Wayne Towers, very gothic, very much like the Jeff Loeb style of the Batman comics, which specifically drew heavy inspiration from the Long Halloween. If anybody's ever read that, it's a very very gothic style of it puts the goth in Gotham essentially. But John, I know that's something you wanted to comment and talk about, and I absolutely want you to. Take reins on this. So what specifically yeah. about this stands out and why is it worthy to bring up for this show? Yeah, so this is really what I wanted to discuss because you and Darth are just, you guys are far more experts on Batman comics than I am. Um, I'm way for, more familiar with like, you know, television and film and animation, that type of thing. Um, not saying that I haven't read comics. I mean, clearly I have, but the level of knowledge that you and Darth have specifically about specific Batman books and writers is far beyond me. So this is what I really wanted to talk about because this is actually what I enjoyed like first and foremost about the film. And I really appreciated how it was shot more like a film noir because it allowed you to... 
I know we'll get into this later, but we have to say it now because it kind of goes along with what I'm saying. So this is not a Batman that we have really seen on film before, uh, and yes. more specifically, cinema film. Because I know Darth is waiting for me to say the wrong thing, so you can be like, uh, uh, uh. So uh, this is very different. We are used to the Frank Miller Batman. We are used to the triumphant, you know, heroic theme with horns playing and Batman jumping in and doing this and saving this and overcoming adversity here and winning over the bad guy at the end, maybe getting the girl, maybe not depends on if he gets her drunk and date rapes her or not. So, you know, it's, we, we, we are... in one movie. Come on. <laughs> it still happened though. Watch uh, Batman 89, <laughs> the date scene, just watch it. And people will understand that reference. I mean, look, all I'm saying is, is if she at morning, she was like that, I didn't consent. That was not normal. Uh, I feel like I'm a victim and I want to press charges. If she pressed charges, Batman is fucking going to jail because he was stone sober and she was drunk and he took advantage yeah, of her. Yeah, but at, that, that, at that point in time, how are you going to subpoena the Batman? Well, a Bruce well, Wayne, like, I'm, I'm using you know, the you know, name like Batman the, like, interchangeably. In the, words of, in the words of Hugo Strange, it was a lot more easier to catch the Batman if he was Bruce Wayne. Ah, there you go. So, anyways, back to this. So, this is a very different Batman film, and I love the way that it was constructed, the framing of the shots, tons of wide-angle shots. Um, we had tracking shots. We had uh, shots that really let you know that Batman was in amongst the people. Yes, he was still in the shadows when he was fighting bad guys, but Batman was very much involved in the public. He was with the police. He was with civilians. He was walking into brightly lit, crowded rooms like he was speaking with some people. Um, this is very different than all the other Batman portrays where Batman really doesn't engage with hardly anybody unless it's the supervillain or Jim Gordon or whatever love interest or if they decide to do Robin or not. That's pretty yeah. much the extent, in Alfred, that's pretty much the extent of his interaction. But in this, he interacts with every, he's like a man of the city. And I really, really liked that because it was just very, very different from what we had had before. And that allowed it to play into the whole kind of psychological thriller aspect to this, where you have, you know, a very like criminal minds, a very like seven feel to the Riddler and what he's doing and the, the videos that he's shooting, um, how he's speaking, the elaborate like ways he's killing people or brutal ways he's killing people, the riddles. That psychological thriller aspect really plays into the whole film noir, the way it was shot, the way it was scored, the way they did a lot of the scenes. And I love the narration of Bruce Wayne over top of it. It, it. it really made me feel some vibes from Watchmen because Watchmen has a lot of cinematography that is very similar. I'm not going to say it's the same, but it's very similar in a lot of ways. And there are two very different films as well, but there are a lot of comparables. Like if you watched the Batman and then you watch Watchmen right after that, you would be like, yep, 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 yep. There are similarities there. Oh and yeah. I really, really enjoyed that because it allowed me to be grounded in this universe that they're building. I wasn't waiting for the next 20 minute Batman fight. I wasn't waiting for some triumphant victory pose on top of a building with a Danny Elfman theme playing. Like I didn't need that because that's not the Batman that they were trying to portray. No. And I think because of the way it was presented to us and how it was put together, it really felt different it didn't feel like the same batman with just a different actor and director right it really felt different from anything else that had been done before and that is really where i connected the most with the film was more on the technical aspects in the filmmaking and the construction uh because i really appreciated what they did and you could tell there was a lot of time an effort put into building that film once they shot it. And uh, I, I just can't compliment it enough for what they were able to put together in that retrospect. Yeah. 
No, I absolutely agree. I mean, th that's what I believe made it so much like the comic books. I'm going to keep my thing short because I want to hear Dart's input. The the monologuing, that's right from the comic book. Most of those little monologues, there's like a lot those square bubbles, which are, you know, what the character is thinking. All Bruce. Those are all Bruce and Batman talking. Uh, yeah, this was a detective story. And you're right. This is Jeff Loeb's Batman. This is not the... I, Frank Miller's is more the action hero Batman, yeah. where it's more like Commando. But with this, <laughs> with this yeah. one, it's a little bit more sophisticated. It's yes. Commando and Seven put together. Because, I mean, the two wanted to work hand in hand. Uh, Frank Miller and Loeb, because, uh, you know, the, spirit, the Long Halloween storyline is somewhat of a spiritual sequel to Frank Miller's uh, year one, because this goes out of its way to say this is year two. So that's what makes it such an interesting thing. Now, Dar now before I bring Darth on real fast or talk to Darth, uh, I want to bring up our guest that just joined us, uh, Mr. Oswald Cobblepot. Hi, the Iceberg Lounge. There he is. There he fucking is, right there. And he got the monocle. I see. Good job, Destin. Thank you so much for joining us. After uh, my so last Destin, scuffle right with now, the Cape, Cape Crusader, I had to buy a new one. So, <laughs> <laughs> can you so give Destin, us a quick penguin honk, real quick? Oh wow! Take it easy, sweetheart. Take it easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh, shit. That's so good, man. I love it. So, so Darth, uh, before we move on, I want to get, get, uh, get your guys' quick review of the Batman. And uh, give us a quick 30 seconds just so we can uh, jump into the bigger details that I know all you have opinions upon. So, Darth, what is your take from the Batman? Hated it. No. Plain, plain and simple. I thought it was a horrible movie. I wanted my three hours back. <laughs> now, um, now, why? Why do you yeah, feel that? You way? need to. You really need to elaborate with us. Why, Darth? It's okay. You didn't like it, but you really. But only elaborate in thirty it. seconds. Still, I was keeping it short and sweet. You guys told me to keep it short. And sweet. <laughs> I'm keeping it short and sweet. So that's been more than thirty seconds. I just did not enjoy the movie. There are parts of the movie that um, I know. I talked to Jesse after we saw it. Yeah, um, that took me right out of the movie, and it took a while for me to get back into the movie, and then they did the same thing over again, which just took me right back out. It was it was lame, and um, I know people didn't notice it because I was the only one that really did. But once you are made aware of it, you will never go back. It's one of those things that you don't want to know what I know. And what he's talking about, just so people know, it's the music. Because it, it had, uh, he said, because now you mentioned the main, that, the main Batman, um, like hero music that they did was three notes off from the Imperial March from Star Wars. It you you can just go and just listen to it, and it's the same music. It's, it's the same. It's the bomb bomb that's really loud, and it makes you think of, and, and that's what you were uh, mentioning to me. I could yeah. see, I I mean. <laughs> It's it. I will mention with music, you, you know, if you look at many pop songs, most pop songs sound the same because they use the same notes and so sure. like record songs. So I mean, that it's. But I do understand how music can because we talked about this, and music gives you emotions. It gives you feels. It it unlocks and you what you're seeing in front of you, filtered through everything in your brain. So I mean, it's a given. I, I will I will even say like, look, I understand music does that. At, at times, um, now, now Oswald. Uh, in this I case, love we're calling him Oswald. Oh, can we call him Ozzy? Can we call him Ozzy? Ozzy. Ozzy. Okay. What was your thoughts on the Batman? Thirty seconds. Go. Oh, okay. My thoughts on the Batman. <laughs> wait, wait. What are you call call me Ozzy? <laughs> oh my God! You made your you made your bed not sleep in it. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I personally. I personally, I really, really liked it, except for a few little parts. Uh, number one, uh, there was not enough of me. Uh, <laughs> part number two, mostly just part number one. Everything else I really liked, uh, but Penguin was very underutilized. 
Yeah. I do agree. I, agree. I do I do agree. I, I agree. I, you know, it was kind of like he just existed so something else could happen, and then they gave him a couple comedic scenes to make us laugh, and then that was it. And I'm Penguin, like Penguin yeah. was the red herring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The red herring villain, yeah. And especially with Colin Farrell going through so much makeup that, you know, I, I believe it was his request that he wanted to be unrecognizable in the makeup, which I think is brilliant. Uh, why would you not use that more? Like, it just, uh, oh, man. Yeah, oh, well, I he's going to be, we're going to be getting an Oswald Cobblepot TV well, show. Yeah. Well, please, please tell me there's an extended version of this so I can waste even more of my time. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> man. Three hours. You have a four-hour uh, cut of this with an extra hour of Penguin? I would watch it. I, I would, would watch, watch it in a heartbeat. I would watch it too. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Ozzy. You're in it. You're obviously going to watch yourself. You vain. I'm a little head. biased. I'm a little biased. <laughs> obviously, you're a little biased. All right. Oh so my God, now that we got our feelings out about the movies, let me jump over to Michael's uh, uh, comment and we'll get de deep dive. What he liked about this movie was it was a Batman movie and a little splash of Bruce Wayne, which made sense. Yeah. yeah. Second time watching it, I clocked four scenes with Bruce Wayne yeah, in the three hour yeah. film, which. Again, that's another hallmark of Joe uh, Jeff Loeb's Batman. He's not that. I mean, it's a. I mean, he's in the comic book. Don't get me wrong. He writes as Bruce Wayne, but there's a. It's a. It's a detective story first and foremost. And was that, it really a detective story? Did Batman actually ever do anything? He yeah. Answered, he answered a couple kid riddles. He knew and, that the thumb was cut off while the guy was alive, and he called it the thumb drive. He did. Um, but one of the big things that was uncovered was done by Ozzy here. He, he, uh, he, he Say it again uncovered. for the people in the back. Um, Ozzy is the true hero of this movie. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'm out. Oh. I'm done. <laughs> oh, there. Oh, thank God. I thought he was wearing on the oh, Holy shit. Okay. Right, I am. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, I, I oh, work late. Goodness. Had to put on this stupid fucking penguin suit for you guys at seven <laughs> o'clock. So this is what you're getting. Oh, it's beautiful, so, man. I I just didn't see a whole lot of detective work from Batman. So most yeah. of it was most of it was spoon fed to him. So I do have uh, a counter to that, Darth. But I think we should save that for when we get to that uh, that section where we talk more about that. This is more about like the structure of the film and everything. I just don't want to jump. Segments. If we're ready to move on, Jesse, let's go we're ahead. We're ready on. to move on, so we can actually talk about this. So let me yeah. give a couple back story. So the 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 story, uh, uh, just to set this the tone, we're year two of Batman. Batman has made himself known. Uh, he the Gotham is still suffering from corruption. Uh, he still he's he doesn't he's not really Batman to the way we know him. He's still this angry person who's still punching his parents' murderer every time he fights somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's angry. He's vengeful. He's a vengeance. He's, he's vengeance. vengeance. Which, by the way, I have a theory for what they're doing with that. And it's the, it, you'll love this. I'll talk about it later. But, anyways, uh, so yeah. And he's, it, he is a detective in this a lot. He's sitting there, he's deciphering the scenes, he's figuring out riddles. Yeah, I know some of them are kid riddles. I get that. But but at the end of the day, the Joe, the Riddler has never really gave hardball riddles, at, you know. Ever even in the comic books, they are pretty mundane. Um, but I mean, he is following leads. He's interrogating people. He's getting. He's he's visiting a lot of people and inter and trying to. I mean, that's a lot of what the Long Halloween was. Each issue was almost him following a lead. So I feel that this fulfilled my I guess my expectations of that comic book in particular uh john right. what were you wanting to do to set up this uh segment i just wanted to give it well, uh, let's transition to the next segment here since we're finished talking about the film structure yeah on the screen jesse yeah okay oh yeah yeah sorry sorry <laughs> on, jesse. laying down on the there deck. we yeah. go oh no next one next one we went to that oh, yeah Hey, there we go. So let's talk yeah. about friends. So we're going to, we're, I just want to make sure we stay on track instead of jumping and doing a segment that we don't have. So yes, I agree. Have, I agree. Have Alfred, the brains, Catwoman, the, the legs, and Jim Gordon, the law. So it, there, there he is. He's got all this, his, uh, his things covered. He, he really Alfred truly figured, does. Alfred figured 90% of everything out because he just like, oh, I, I, I cracked the cipher. Here you go. 
Yeah, um, but I like Catwoman that. Did all of his leg work for him, where he wasn't <laughs> supposed to be. And then Gord was like, uh, I'll protect you from the law. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, but, Go ahead. but Batman needs help I'm to done. do that. It's not unbelievable that he would need allies to assist him. And in most iterations, I'm saying most, I don't want to make an assertion of absolute, but in most, Alfred does something other than being a butler. Even old ass Alfred in the uh, 80s to mid 90s original trilogy did some tech work, you know, to help out Bruce Wayne. I loved Jeremy Irons as Alfred because he was doing all, like all the engineering work, and I thought that was awesome. Oh no, that's uh, very, that's very accurate to the comic book. Yeah, that's so I funny. liked this Alfred that he may not be as engaged with the engineering and the gadgetry, but he's engaged with like the fact finding and the intelligence behind things. I don't see that as a negative. Involving Alfred is just part of Batman's crew. Alfred is in a, 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 a movie crew. that's. In a movie that's set to be a detective story, where Batman is learning to become a detective, sure, he didn't do it. It was more other people did it for him, and he just kind of sat there and watched. Well, so you know, I don't if know they if, showed, if they showed more of a growth, I would be all for that. So they I don't kind of get at the very end where the the last guy was like, "Oh, this is actually a you know a spreader or whatever it was, a, or a tucker." And he was like, oh, I, I get it now. And he looked, but he would have never figured that out unless the guy told him. So, so but I, I, just, mean, I just but feel that's that not, it was that's not, more. But that's not unheard of in Batman comics because in, in the comic books, I mean, a lot of times. I mean, True. I, I get that. He, gets, yeah. he follows a lot of leads. But in this movie, you are supposed to be setting up him being a detective. Okay, so let's, okay. So let's talk about Alfred, Catwoman, and Jim Gordon either. right now. Oh, oh, oh yeah. We'll, yeah. We're, we're, we'll, we'll get right. to, we've got, uh, we'll, we'll cover this in others. I just want to, I really yeah, want to stay on, on topic. topic. Let's keep on topic. Um, so I was fine with this version of Alfred. I enjoyed that he was more the intellect version of Alfred, who was kind of assisting Bruce Wayne. Uh, I loved Jim Gordon, and I loved how they were chummy. I, it reminded me of kind of like a Kirk and Spock thing, and I really, really enjoyed that. I, yeah, to me, that was my favorite relationship, like in the film. I really enjoyed Gordon and Batman's relationship. I would go uh, as far as say this is our best Jim Gordon. I will go as far as uh, Gary Oldman's still number one for me, but I, I could be fine. persuaded. I could yeah. be persuaded. No, um, no, Gary Oldman is definitely, definitely up high. Trust me. Yeah. When I mean, when I mean, when I feel that this guy was better, it's by a percentage. Gotcha. By so, a very real small quick, market. Catwoman, and then I'm going to let you guys go because I don't want to talk. Um, so Catwoman, I'll, I will say, was probably my least favorite part of the film. I really didn't see a point for her to be there other than to distract Batman. It was weird how the relationship was because we entered it with them already knowing each other. I don't know. It was it was just strange. I don't think she really did much of anything. And if she wasn't in the movie, I think the plot could have progressed forward without her. Um, I, I, I thought it was weird that she was so motivated to catch the Riddler for killing her roommate that she was only kind of close to. I don't know. It was just the, to me, like the, her whole thing was just way off and I just didn't care about it. So yeah, it you know, I, I could have taken her leave in Catwoman. She was the part of the movie. I actually didn't really care about. Actually. Uh, funny thing is that's the part I did like. Oh, okay. Well, Darth, give us yours. And then I want to hear from Ozzy on uh, how he feels about the characters. Um, I think if you remove Catwoman, you lose a lot because, again, if, if they followed the Dark Victory and then the Catwoman went in Rome story arc a little bit, yep, where um, she was the daughter of Falcone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you needed that, and I I loved when she scratched him, yes, straight out of the comic book. That was cool. I'll, okay, You're so there. the Falcone connection, and I will one, agree with. One of the big things is when you. Catwoman was very protective of her family and of her friends. So it is in her character. Okay. That if, you know, she she knew this girl 
it wasn't just a, a, a random acquaintance. She knew this girl. The girl was staying with her. Um, so, you know, and she felt guilty about it and mm-hmm. wanted to take it out. And Catwoman's very vicious when she went, wants to be. Oh, indeed, indeed. So, yes, this whole thing about it, the only thing I didn't like is she put her damn cats on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> and away. I think it's like scary. It's there in the engine. It's like freaking the shit out. Oh, yeah. fuck. Literally right next to the exhaust. And you have loud, loud, loud exhausts on motorcycles. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So that's the only downside about the Catwoman. Ozzy has been sitting here in silence. What do you got, man? Well, you've heard my voice, so it's a good thing I've been silent. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Uh, Alfred. Uh, I personally, again, I really uh, like that he was more than just a wise old man. Mm -hmm. um, Because after all, Alfred spent his early life as a badass spy. So it's perfectly within character that not only is he continuing to look after uh, Emo Wayne, but that he's also, (laughs) that he's actually being useful. Besides, he kind of pushed a lot of the butlering duties off onto uh, Dolly. Mm-hmm. Believe his name Dory. Dory, that's right. Sorry, I couldn't find Dory. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Batman. You know me and my <laughs> fish. So, um, uh, uh, Catwoman. Uh, Catwoman. Uh, uh, I just don't care about Catwoman. <laughs> uh, and I mean, it's, she. She was fine. I actually, my big gripe. I actually thought their relationship in this particular uh, production was actually kind of uh, kind of forced uh, at the yeah. early stages. Um, like I don't know, but also because again, he's just such a brooding man child the whole time. He does not have uh, he doesn't have swagger. He doesn't have game. So like right. the fact that she was so enamored with the guy, uh, I don't know. That that could be uh, Loeb's fault in that, because even because and I'll agree. When I read the Long Halloween, uh, he is like this in the yeah. and there was times when I was reading the comic, I was like, okay, <laughs> it's like I'm like I mean I get that they're they're destined like in that manner, but I'm just like, yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. They they like relied the heavily on the bothered. fact they relied very heavily on the fact that we uh, as Batman. Yeah, people know that Batman, Catwoman, Bat and the Cat, you know, Bat and the Cat. <laughs> uh, I mean, they. I, I I like that they ended the movie with that little that little ditty. But um, all right, and then so uh, Catwoman, uh, she's all right. Uh, Jim Gordon, uh, no no complaints about Jim Gordon whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, actually, well, no, no, I I do take that back. I do oh, in this particular complaint. movie, the GCPD is still just way too okay with the relationship of Jim Gordon and, and Brit Batman. Like they see that they're like, Oh, your guy, he's a vigilante. That's against the law. They shouldn't be that. Okay. That Jim Gordon and the Batman are just especially, going on a crime scene. Especially with how young his career it is. Exactly. Yeah. Like he, he's only okay. just recently. Okay. Yeah. He's only he, they, they only know they, about him a little bit. Like he, they, they shouldn't they, know they that he is. He's been around for two years. They exactly. mentioned that multiple times to make sure that you were aware. He's only been doing this for two years. He's been doing this for two years. Hey guys, did you remember? Did you hear? He's been doing this for two years. Yeah. Now, real quick, I want to uh, 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 Ozzy. I want to drill down on something that you were talking about with the relationship between Batman and Catwoman, um, and you also brought up emo Bruce, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to say it several times. R. Pat completely nailed this role. I loved him in this role. Wow. Uh, so, <clears throat> do you think that? And we're only speaking on the context of this universe in this film, based on what we were shown. Okay, but do you think that perhaps Catwoman and Batman have an attraction to each other because they are both kind of doing this vigilante thing? Meaning that if it was just simply Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne, would they have the same chemistry versus Catwoman and Batman having their chemistry? I love that you're approaching this like the Ben Folds the luckiest 
<laughs> uh, that's a bit of a deep cut if people don't know Ben Folds, but um, no, I yeah, I have to agree. If uh, Emo Wayne actually left the manor and right. actually like went to a nightclub, ran into <laughs> Selena Kyle, uh, especially given Selena Kyle's line of work, probably not, uh, yeah. because she's a she's a nightclub worker, uh, exotic dancer, bartender, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if they see countless du- countless dudes going in there thinking they're all that. So it would be nothing to him. But so yeah, it kind of I think she's way more attracted to the mask mm-hmm. than the man under it. Yeah, I think so too. It looks like we're all head nodding on that. It looks like yeah. we all agree. Well, and because he looks like a leather daddy been. and she's probably into some really kinky stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh Darth, what did you just say? And then let's go ahead and move That's on to our much, next topic. Pretty much um the way it's always been in any kind of incarnation of of the bat and the cat is it's she's they're both attracted to the other suit yes now in batman returns though they were also attracted to each other outside of the suits as well right Alina and bruce were attracted catwoman and batman were attracted and then when they figured out who they were they were still attracted so it was like Mm -hmm. total package with them which is a part of batman returns i actually really liked look at both of them you know michael keaton or as i like to call him kiki is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is super dreamy and Michelle Pfeiffer, come on now. Was yeah. was yeah. Kiki dreamy in 1991 though when that movie came out? Oh, yeah, he was. Was he really? I, f- I feel like Keaton passed the uh, the dreamy stage after Mr. Mom, man. When Wait. He, got, he made Batman, he was already getting a little tired. So, what about Keaton being past the dreamy stage? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Wait, Keaton did is you the see man. Him in the vulture, exactly. I, I I I would say he's more dreamy now than he was back then. I think he looks awesome, a little bit older with the like short hair and shit. So I mean, I'm just saying, a little gray, a little yeah, a little, little touch sweet. of gray, man. <laughs> I think specifically with uh, Keaton again, that's a different iteration of like I said, like with Frank Miller's Batman. He was a lot more uh, pageantry in that sense, being the playboy. So give it a good example. In year one, Gordon kind of starts to deduce that Bruce is Batman. And he makes a bullshit reason to go to Bruce's house for this police charity. We need some money and stuff like that. And comically, Bruce walks down the stairs in an open robe with two Scandinavian models <laughs> hanging around. He sits <laughs> down in front of the Gordons. His he he spread the eagle legs and they see his junk and and you know Miss, Mrs. Gordon's very offended. Eventually they leave and she goes, "What a disgusting human being!" And Gordon replies, "You bought that." Ah, yeah. Gordon see. always the one thing that's very interesting about Gordon, he purposely stays one step behind of figuring out Batman's identity. In the comic, he does it because if he knows, it puts him in a rough situation with the sure. law. Sure. But if he's always purposely one step behind, he gives him this plausible deniability. Yeah, no, so, I, just just yeah, like I, how Lucius Fox was. So, oh yeah, right? yeah. Um, talk about that the uh, comic book uh, No Man's Land, where oh, yeah. Bruce Bruce just takes the mask off in front of him. Yeah, Gordon turns around and says, "Put it back on." I don't. I don't want to know. Yep. So. Yeah, and that and that and that is a very and that that goes into a great theme of identity and stuff like that that uh, is built so much into the Batman, which we might get a piece of because with this movie, it did set up No Man, a version of No Man's Land in this case, which we have seen numerous times in adaptations: Dark Knight Rises, The Gotham Season Five. Be ending of season four so we are getting a version of that so it's quite possible we might get that scene eventually which i think with the dynamic that these two have the chemistry which uh you know um uh, uh mike agrees on yeah i think we're gonna see that yeah. in this upcoming film i we'll i definitely want to see that jesse let's go ahead and wrap up this segment and move on to the next one so yeah uh just to wrap up i feel that each of these characters were very specific to Loeb's version of these characters, which I thought was a breath of fresh air to see. Uh, because, like I said, 
if you're gonna re if you're gonna make another reboot of the Batman, give us something new. And I think character wise, from this angle, they gave us a lot of new, even with these villains, especially uh Riddler, top to bottom, different character entirely. Right. Um, you know, they gave us more of a zodiac killer vibe that has been kind of teased and played with in the Arkham games where he's kind of this jigsaw character, still an obnoxious prick when he talks, but 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 more this like traps and such. Penguin, they finally fleshed him out as being this nightclub guy who owns the Iceberg Lounge. And I'm so interested in seeing the TV show, so I'm very fascinated by how well they got Ozzy down. And Falcone and the Corruption, beautiful. Again, as Darth said, they 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 hinted the they used the Dark Three storyline. He's Catwoman's father. Um, and I, and I, I just thought, and, and I loved the one thing about Falcone I absolutely love is when they retold the small little story from Long Halloween where Thomas Wayne saves Falcone's life. I did yeah. like that. I really liked beautiful. how they brought that in there. So I like beautiful. That. So beautiful. You know they understand the comics. But but but, that, but I, I, enough of me. How about you guys? What were so, your thoughts on these characters? So, real quick, uh, I, 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 I have to know from Ozzy. Ozzy, are you satisfied with your portrayal in this film? Yes or no, and why? Um. I, all right, well... It's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. On so I'll, I'll I'll break it down. I'll pull back the. Uh, I'll start by pulling back the uh, the latex here. So okay. Colin Farrell himself. <laughs> yeah. He he is a, a a great actor, who I've only seen do his worst movies. So, uh, so this yeah. is his best performance. Yeah. Best performance. Uh, however, I am so annoyed that they had to cast him. It wasn't necessary. There are plenty of actors out in Hollywood that look like me that were born to play the Penguin. But no, they had to hot wash Penguin. They had to get a very attractive older Irish man to take the part of us fat uglies, and I won't stand for it. <laughs> you gotta have representation, right? Word. Pat oh, Oswald is out in Hollywood right. right now. Would be the perfect penguin. <laughs> John Lovitz would be the perfect Dude, penguin. I, I would pay good money to see John Lovitz as the penguin. I'm oh just God, say yes. it right now, man. I would only. I would only want John Lovitz only if he does the dialogue from Little Nicky. Well, it? It? It's, have a horny, more... it's a horny bird who wants to see your mother naked. <laughs> if it was John Lovitz as the penguin, he would have to be doing the Burgess Meredith penguin. That's the only oh, way it would oh, work is, is if he was doing that. No, uh, I want a very serious, very dark show <laughs> from John Lovitz. Oh, yeah. you mean like Danny wanna... DeVito where he just had black shit coming out of his mouth the whole no, time? Because... I want, I want just a serious role. I want to show that he has acting chops and this be his coming out and becoming a serious actor. Okay, I'll say, dude, I him, love him, him watching him watching everyone lose their minds and him just reaping the benefits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the curtain slowly closes in front of his face. And the Oscar for best supporting actor goes to John Lovitz. John Lovitz is <laughs> I'm thinking of all, the all of a sudden movie. pigs pigs are flying everywhere. Hell freezes over because those words were said. I'm thinking of the end of the Entourage movie. I don't know if you guys saw that, where the end the the idiot brother wins an Academy Award or a Golden Globe. He's like, "Holy shit, you got to be kidding me!" <laughs> it was a great it was a great ending to the to the series and to the movie. So. But to, to, to truly answer your question, though, I had I had to get that whole why the hell did they have the cast Colin Farrell? But other than that, it still it was it was it was good. I liked it, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm fucking dressed up like Penguin either. There just needed to be more of him. I agree. And last question for Ozzy, real quick here, related to Penguin. Okay, which because I know you are like the biggest Penguin fan ever, uh, clearly. So. Out of all of the on-screen penguins, so not from books or literature, on screen, right. number one, which is your favorite and why? Uh, 
Burgess Meredith. Yeah, so, I gotta agree, man. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, in that case, very few times am I like, yeah, it's the OG. But no, Burgess Meredith is is my penguin. My my least favorite is Danny DeVito. Um, hmm. But it's also because, uh, much like uh, Sam Raimi with Venom, uh, Tim Burton just didn't understand Penguin. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, he's admitted to that after the fact. We all saw that he didn't. <laughs> uh, it just made him a, a freakish monster, and he's not that. He is. I love Penguin because he's kind of like always meant to be laughable. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's always kind of like the the go to villain for campy. I mean, I know they said that about Riddler until we got the Twitch streamer incel in this movie, but <laughs> but I love I love that. By the way, uh, I I, I, I really I love that. But I really did love Paul Dano in this movie. Again, Colin Farrell did fine. I would say, uh, yeah, of, of, as far as the live action penguins go, uh, actually, I don't know, because then there was the guy in Gotham. I can't remember his name. You no, know, uh, I didn't like, really care for Gotham, but he did a good job. I know. He, he oh, he was the, the, in my opinion, he was the best part. And again, not I by agree. the start, but um, yeah. I just can't remember his name. But I mean, I, I like Penguin in this. I just, I, I can't wait to see more. Yeah. For the obvious reasons, too. But Sure. And I think that the series will be really good as well. I'm looking forward to that. So before I ask Darth about what his favorite foe was in this film, I got to say, John Turturro knocked it out of the fucking park as Falcone. Holy shit, man. Perfect. What, what a treat and a surprise. Oh, my God. Like, I already love the guy's entire catalog anyways. But this was yeah, just going, oh, going from the director of big. Section Seven to being Falcone. Yes, please. Oh yeah, yeah. It was just fantastic, man. I don't, I didn't want him. Well, I guess we already did a spoiler warning. I didn't want him to die. I was upset he got shot. I'm like, what? Really? We're doing this in the first movie? Holy shit! Like, yeah. I really wanted him to stay on for a little bit longer. You know, I mean, I get it, but what? his his storyline is over. I mean, I get that, but I just, like, I, I like him, and I like his character, so I just was yeah. upset when he got shot, and I realized we weren't going to see him again. Yeah. I felt well, for the guy. A, a Sal Maroney is still out there. You never know. We might get a <laughs> Sal Maroney. But it, it, it seeing him go was rough, because, like, but they were, like I said, they were following that storyline. I get it. I get it. But yeah, I agree. No, John Turturro, he... Wow. You don't understand, like, go look at Long Halloween and look at an image of Falcone. It's shocking. It's really good. It casts yeah. So like like I understand the whole the, the whole character of Falcone. He has to be uh not very present. Uh, but again, it's like I understand why he wasn't a bigger part uh, of screen time. But again, you, you get to Turo, and uh, he, I just wanted more of him. Yeah. And, and I get was, why we didn't, but I just wanted more. Yep. And I that was the that. challenge of trying to do a movie that was very much like the comic books, because the comic books are very episodic. So you're only getting like spotlights of all the characters. And that, and that is, a, and that's something, you know, because, but I see the reason why I like that so much is because, in my opinion, we have not had a Batman movie about Batman since 2005's Batman Begin. Where- I agree, but I would even argue Batman Begins wasn't necessarily about Batman. It was more about Bruce Wayne not only getting his own redemption, but then evolving into yeah. Batman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a Batman-centric Batman movie since Batman 66. Yeah. Come I on. mean, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb, Darth. So, yeah. You know. Well, what I mean is, and, and John, I'm so glad you brought that up. That, clarify, uh, that clarifies it. But it's, it is it is about that growth. You're absolutely right. What I, and what I'm saying that is because you look at movies like uh, The Dark Knight. At the end of the day, your first thought when you think of The Dark Knight is the Joker. And sure. the first thought, Batman Rise, you, you think of Bane. And then, and then Batman versus Superman was more of, you know, a, a movie where we're trying to bring it together. It wasn't really a focused movie on Batman. So that's why, like, for this movie, I felt like it was about him going from, I'm vengeance. I'm vengeance. And then he sees what vengeance really is. It's what the Riddler is. And he realizes, no, 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 no. I got to be better. I have to be, right. 
I got to be hope for Gotham. I got to be something more. And, and that's what I felt was really good about this movie. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the villain's performances weren't spotlight. Hell, they brought their A game. And like I said, I want to see more. So before we jump into that, because uh, we're getting ready to transition to our next segment here, where we got about 15 minutes left. Darth, in terms of foes, I know you didn't like the film, and that's okay. But of the highlighted ones in this film, which one did you happen to like the best, even if it's still the worst for you, if that makes sense? I feel pressure. I don't yeah, know why. I'm letting you know, I man. Don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Um, as much as I like our Ozzy, um, it was a throw. Uh, Penguin was a throwaway character. You could have replaced him with random henchman number seven. Well, I don't know about been... random henchman, but he could be replaced with ex foe. Yes, sure. Right, Steve yeah. from accounting. It could have been him. And it would have been the it would have been the same thing. Yeah, it's cool to have a named character and knowing that there's going to be more to them. Yeah, and sure. the HBO series and that stuff, I'm good with. But that's a there's a lot of money to spend on a on an actor, a well known actor, to hide them and then not spotlight them. Well, the yeah. hiding was his request, though. I so. know, but you know, the studio could have made it not as as um hit him as as well but let's, let's let's add, all admit that that makeup that they did for him is probably some of the best makeup yeah, i've ever seen i i agree i'm just saying they spent oh, a lot oh, of money on him um, let's let him jump he, in. Uh, well it, give give a third place because let's not forget robert Downey jr tropic thunder <laughs> he was nominated dude, for an Oscar for that role. Yes, he dude was. Playing a dude playing another dude. A dude playing um, another dude. Disguised <laughs> as another dude. Yeah. Uh, the Riddler. I love that movie. I, I give or take. I didn't like him. That's just me. Um, Falcone. I love Falcone. Okay, there we go. Good. Now Riddler, though, I look at Riddler as two different characters. We have in the suit Riddler, and then we have Riddler unmasked in Arkham, who looks strangely like that meme of that red-headed kid that's, like, pointing at somebody all pissed off. Like, whenever Riddler <laughs> unmasked was on film, all I could see was that meme and that kid. I'm just like, did they get that kid to be in this movie? They like, totally got that kid. They dude, totally it looks that. just like him. But, uh, okay, so Falcone would be, or Falcone, Falcone, whatever. Um, <laughs> That would be your pick, Darth. The one that you enjoyed the most out of the selection is what you're saying. Yeah. That and the twins. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Every time, every time they were, he opens the door. What do you want? Or you know, and then he's like, okay, closes it and then <laughs> opens it back up, and there's two of them. Yeah. It and reminded me of the twins from GI Joe. Man, I'm not gonna lie, the Cobra yeah. twins. <laughs> yeah, first, I thought they got uh, what uh, Taylor Lautner. Oh shit, like, man! He's not like, doing anything. Oh god, now. that would have been hilarious if they got Taylor. Yeah, to him to play him. But, yeah, and know. then he and Edward Cullen could have some big showdown in their in their suits in the Batman movie. <laughs> okay, then if we're gonna do that, make a man bat. Make a man bat. Make it the exact opposite. That's what you're gonna do. That's what you're gonna do if you're gonna bring Taylor Lautner in, just for the humor in that matter. But All real right. quickly, but real quickly, uh, just uh, got one more thing before we transition. What do you got? I was gonna say. Uh, because we've been saying Falcone and Falcone, just so everybody knows, either of those are correct. It's all based on Italian dialect. So, just well, make Jesse, sure. you're the Italian of the four of us. How is it pronounced? Oh, either way, Falcone. If you're an American, Falcone. If you're English, it's Falcone. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. It okay. was another. There's another villain you left out of this, by the way. Oh, uh, we, we're going to talk about him in a second. No, 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 no. Not, not that one. No, uh, white privilege. <laughs> the fact the that greatest Batman, villain of all the fact that Batman lives in this tower and has all these gadgets in like the basement of the tower and has I mean the privilege yes building. the privilege I get that I just had to love that that woman had to throw in one line of white privilege she we did drive that I'm okay home. with her doing because in the yeah. comics in every other iterations white privilege is a 
theme in some of the comics. They just never say the word. They never say the phrase. Like right. some villains will go as far. The ones that know who Batman is, Bruce Wayne, like for example, Hugo Strange, he'll be like, "Well, don't you ever blame yourself? Why did you think you knew better?" to be judge, the judge and jury of Gotham rather than take all your money and fund better things and this and that. And that. Like, he he throws it right in his face. So, yeah. But anyways, I don't want to get too much into that because we're running low on time and I want to get to the next step. Yes, the next step I find next, very yeah. fascinating. So, um, I know we got, we're going to talk about Batman too, but, we're, but let's talk about some of the quick Easter eggs that I thought were fantastic. And if you're going to go see the movie again, keep an eye out for it. Number one. Who here saw the 1966 Easter eggs? I didn't, but I know what they are because I talked to you. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I didn't see them. I did, and I love the 66 film, so I didn't see them. What did two, I miss? There was two Easter eggs. Darth, would you like to give them? Um, well, you had the Shakespeare bust. Where was that at? In the scene right where the bomb was about to blow up in front of Alfred, it's uh, right. It's right there. Oh man, I totally missed that. Damn. And. Ozzy, what was the maid's name again? Dory. And was was there a Dory in the Batman anime or Batman sixty six series? I don't think her name was Dory. I can't it's double back that. There was there was a uh, Marilyn. Oh, no, not Marilyn. Hold on. Yeah, what's her name? Yeah, it's the maid that they keep lying to. Even though Alf, which I always found that weird in the nineteen sixty six, Alfred knew that. Batman was Batman and Robin, but then like they just kept lying to the maid and making like silly excuses, like "Oh yeah, we're off to doing this." <laughs> like, I thought that was the aunt. I didn't think that that was a maid. Well, it wasn't. No, this was a maid. That was an aunt. I just thought that was a nice little detail that they. Oh, put okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but I just thought that was kind of because it was. I don't know. I I enjoyed it. The sixty six show. And then, yeah. Um, All right. I um, mentioned the fact that Pattinson was running down the, uh, running down a uh, the the wall, the, and it kind of looked like when Batman yes, and Robin no climbed one. up the wall. I, I, I thought that was kind of interesting. That was cool. I well, you didn't it. see the scene where Bert uh, Bert Ward sticks his head out the window, going, "This looks familiar," and then closes the window. <laughs> 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 All right. So. Uh, let's, uh, then there's this, there's another rumor going around of another Easter egg. Did anybody catch an idea of who could be ro the next Robin in this movie? Yeah, there was the, uh, the kid wearing the half makeup. Yep. Everybody, there's work. Too. And I think that would make a great, um, a lot of people are saying Dick Grayson, but I think it would be John's favorite Robin. Tim Drake. Tim Dre. And that could be. And ironically, if I'm I might be so incorrect to say this, but I think that that same I think that was the same actor who plays Tim Drake in Titans. I could be very wrong. I haven't researched, so don't hold me to that. But I think that might be the same actor. So that's another interesting yeah. thing that is if out we there. Only had all of all of information at the tip of our fingers. I know, right? Well, you basically you could see how much I prepared for this segment. So my apologies, everybody. Uh, no. Also, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, I fingers crossed. Like, look, you you guys all know me. I very much love the Robin character. Ever since I was a kid, watching the '66 series, I just much more preferred Robin than Batman. And I think it's because I was younger and he was younger and I was like, oh, that'd be awesome being a sidekick to Batman. And then he grew up and became Nightwing and kicked ass. And I just, I've always, and I've always enjoyed the Robin costume. I like the, the yellow and black cape. I kind of like the red tunic with the black and green. You know, I just, I don't know. I, I've just, I, I like the Robin character a lot. And well, you're we, gonna we, love didn't, we didn't get Robin with Chris O'Donnell. We didn't yeah. get Robin with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So I, I just give me a fucking real Robin in a live action film. I don't think that's asking too much. John, well, you are already threw down the Bloodhaven uh, geography on us. The Blood John, you are correct. Or Jesse, what? you are correct. It was the same kid. Oh, oh okay. All right, there we well, go. 
I mean, that, that, that's that you can't ignore that. That's yeah. I think that's too much of a coincidence. Well, there there goes me holding out hope that the fact that he started out in a world of crime was a hint that it would be more a Jason Todd Robin, because then that would set up the obviously the anti-hero turn that he would take. That yeah. with that the and with the introduction of Joker, as well. Ah, shit. Spoiled that. Yeah, yeah, we will. I, I know that's next on the docket, but I mean, with yeah, Joker coming you, up, that could you know, set up the the Red they're, Hood. They're they're story. just going to make this kid Dick Grayson. I, I know they are. I know they are. I know they are. We can but, hope, though. But look to to Ozzy's point, though. He like let's say that this expands into like a multi film franchise. If if we get you know, let's say just hypothetically speaking, we get Dick Grayson in the second film, right? And then maybe in the third film he becomes Nightwing. And so then we get Jason Todd. And then at the end of the third film, we can have him get killed off. So then we can bring Red Hood back in the fourth film. Like, I mean, there's, there's things that we can do with this. That I'm really DC excited. will get fed up with um, Pattinson and reboot it again. No, I think they're going to stay with this. This is the, the, I, a lot of people like this. I think they're, they're investing stay with this a lot. They're movies. investing a lot into this Batman universe. Yeah. They are. They so already have three something. now. Now it's up to three spinoffs. It was two yesterday. It's three now. So and it basically, based on the enthusiasm of Pattinson, it looks like he wants to stick with Batman for a very long oh, time. Absolutely, and, and I can tell the enthusiasm. But again, we're getting short on time, so I want to get to the next couple things. Let's do uh, it. Did anybody catch the hush teaser? No. Yeah, because oh. didn't the the Elliot guy get killed and then Hush came across the screen or whatever it was? Yes, Thomas Elliot is uh, Hush. Uh, his father he he has a personal vendetta against Bruce Wayne's family. In the comic book, it was because Batman's parents died while his parents survived. One of them survived a car accident that Elliot mm-hmm. caused, and therefore he couldn't inherit the riches that Bruce inherited from his parents immediately so this sets up a nice conflict that isn't too much about somebody trying to kill their parents to get money but one of them survives so i think this is and this does fit the whole serial killing kind of seven uh vibe that has been prevent presented in this movie so i think that will be a very interesting thing plus the idea of somebody who kills people and takes the skin off their face to graft a perfect Bruce Wayne face would be a very interesting thing to see. Well, it fits the, it definitely fits the more dark and sinister theme of the, the main, you know, villains that they're kind of establishing. So I would, I would love to see that, to be honest. I would love it. And then last but not least, let's talk about the biggest uh, Easter egg that everybody has been talking about. Yeah. The Joker. So I have a question real quick. In especially in this, so in in other Batman mythos, we've done this, right? Everything's out of Arkham. The villains come and go from Arkham. It's like a balloon contracting and retracting. Like they they go to Arkham, they break out. They go to Arkham, they break out. Right? Batman seems to have a real problem beating the shit out of people with mental health problems. So yep. you know, uh, maybe he should take some some lessons to become a therapist. But I really like what they're doing here. This is like earlier, earlier Arkham. So, okay, let's have all these fucking crazy people in here. And, you know, we'll kind of figure out how to get them out here and there for the different movie they're going to be in. So I thought it was cool that Joker was talking to him before he's really established Joker. And that they're having a dialogue and they're talking back and forth. Like, I really enjoyed that. Um, I would have liked to have maybe seen some shadows of some other figures, kind of like how the second Amazing Spider-Man teased the Sinister Six. Uh, I would have liked to have seen a little bit of that, maybe. Maybe we've got Freeze locked up. Maybe we've got Mad Hatter locked up. Maybe we got Clock King locked up. I would have liked to have kind of seen a little bit of that, because those are some villains that I really want to see in the series. I haven't talked to you guys about this, but there were two other somewhat Easter eggs that could go towards other villains. You Dude, know, sure. this was the, uh, what was it? Negative 4,400 nightclub or minus 4,400 nightclub. Ah, okay. Could, could go off of Mr. Freeze. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which Good. I would love to see, and even though I when, don't think we're going to do meta, but I'd like to see it. And then when um, Bruce was dying, Yep. And pulled out that yep. vial. Oh, yeah. That clearly it wasn't adrenaline. 
Yeah, it clearly that blow was green. Yeah, was, what was that? Venom, venom, venom. And when he, <laughs> when he when he jabbed that, I leaned over to my friend and said, "He just shot venom." Yeah, and, and then, then he just my, left up and literally. My other buddy, that guy. who's also a huge, it was a monster energy player. drink. All right, I know what it was. <laughs> leaned over to my the same buddy and goes, "I think that was venom." And the guy who's sitting in between us has no idea what venom is. He's like. <laughs> The Spider-Man character? I'm like, no. (laughs) No. No. For people that aren't familiar with Venom, that is the chemical compound that gives Bane his super strength in the comic books. And it is a chemical that in some iterations is manufactured by Wayne Enterprise. And let's face it, Wayne likes to dabble in patent technology that his company (laughs) has. Yep. (laughs) See, see, I I was going to bring up the Venom if you didn't. so yeah, I was kind of hoping that that would once again bring the League of Shadows back in, Ooh. possibly like even go, me. possibly even go a court of. Uh, or I like I like the idea that Riddler, his community, was actually linked to the League of Shadows, so they were actually manipulating Ooh. him into doing the work of the League of Shadows. That would be cool. I that. Was, yeah. That that would follow suit. That, that would be cool. I like that idea, Ozzy. That would be. I also cool. just want Court of Owls too. If if you could do that to, that also at some point, I think Riddler is aware of the Court of Owls with that owl card that he gave out in yeah. the beginning of the movie. Uh, yeah, does... I've been wanting to see Court of Owls for a while. Court of Owls, for those who do not know, is like the Illuminati of Gotham. So, and Bruce's parents, if I remember correctly, were a part of it or had some sort of connection to it. So this would definitely fit with the whole idea of, you know, Bruce's parents being sort of fallible in these iterations of Batman. So I'm very interested in seeing what they do with that. And Matt Reeves knows what he's doing. But to go back real quickly, just to wrap this segment up, the War of Jokes and Riddles, there's a comic book line where after joker and riddler's friendship sours they the war goes on between these two for gotham so it'd be very interesting to see their friendship blossom and then fall apart in the in these movie franchises only to end up causing a war so yeah but the the joker in this based here's what we do know for a fact from matt reeves the director joker has been around batman is aware of him he's not really the joker that we come to know he's still Mm -hmm. in his creation his growth um he has some sort of disorder like a nervous tick that makes him kind of laugh a little bit like joaquin phoenix's joker and and i think they're gonna play off the idea that he's very super sane like because one of the misconceptions about joker is that he's insane and that's not what he is he's super sane to the point where he sees the world as a joke and it, in the grand scheme of things, how we're kind of like this, like speck of a fingernail of a giant being, the grand scheme of things, nothing matters. So kind and of like the comedian. A uh, very much Ooh, like the comedian. Good comparison. Very much like that. So he's very, yeah, because like. So yeah, this Joker is still just bombing at open mics right now. That's yeah. the stage he's at right now. Bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even Heath Ledger's Joker was, in my oh, opinion, yeah, was great. I Bomber never got, I never got insanity from Heath Ledger's Joker. He, he was, was more of an smart. anarchist. What? He was an anarchist. He, he was yeah. an anarchist. He watched yeah. the world burn. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Joker is an anarchist at, at his soul, and that was the element they flexed the hardest on. No doubt in the world on that. Um, but so yeah, I have, I have one question cause we're out of time before we wrap up. Okay. okay and okay. I want ev- all four of us to answer this question one at a time. And the question is you can only pick one, but you're allowed to have a number two. If you want, what villain do you want to see in this Matt Reeves franchise? Uh, Ozzy start us off. Uh, um, I'm just trying to think of uh, just trying to think of when we haven't gotten in a very long time. Or uh, I, I I was gonna say Mister Freeze, honestly, because we just we've gone it. a lot longer without him. And again, the fact that they hinted at it with the uh, uh, for the uh, the club, yeah, yeah. Okay, my, my competition. Good uh, choice. Yeah, Darth. 
I mentioned it in the last episode. I want to see Martin Short as the Mad Hatter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that would just be fantastic. Yeah, uh, Jesse, you? Like I said, I'm going to say Mr. Freeze. And, and my reasoning behind that is because every Batman movie we've seen thus far, he's been minus Batman and Robin, which Batman and Robin did this poorly. We have fought, Batman has fought a villain who is inherently evil. Or it thinks he's doing the right thing because he's evil. Uh, you know, crazy. But Mr. Freeze knows what he's doing is wrong. Yeah. But this is somebody he loves. And he will cross every line to save her. Yeah. His and motivation is his wife. And I think that is such an interesting storyline to see Batman struggle with that. I mean, because Batman, if he could save his, his family, he'd do it in a heartbeat. He understands the. He understands that he will break rules to save his family, mm -hmm. and and he understands the struggle of that, especially in the Red Hood, where you know Jason Todd was pissed at. I'm like, I wasn't asking you to kill anybody. I was asking you just to kill Joker to save me. Why was and he even he killed me? Why didn't you just kill him? So this and because Batman has come close to killing, and Gordon stopped him famously in Hush. Because in the storyline, spoiler alert, Joker, there's a, there's a scene where it looks like he killed Thomas Elliot. And Batman starts punching him and choking him to the point where he doesn't listen to Gordon. Gordon shoots and shoots the cow, like the ears off the cow, to make a point like, don't cross this line or else. So... I think if you include that element with this and this being very much in line, we can see a very conflicted Batman mm -hmm. fight a very conflicted villain who really isn't inherently evil at all. And I think that would be great. So I absolutely agree with Mr. Freeze and I agree with uh, Mad Hatter. You guys know I've been championing that for years. If it's a Mr. Freeze, I definitely would prefer a Batman animated series style. Mr. Heart of Freeze. Ice. Um, but because those two were already taken, my other two choices would, uh, definitely be clock King. I Ooh. absolutely love clock King. I think he would be great in this franchise and I would just, and Jesse, you know, I've been talking about this for years. I got to see my man killed. I can, uh, come oh in and God. really challenge Bruce Wayne, but it can't be until later on when Batman's very established, like shit, yes. like, polished everything that's when you bring kodai ken in to challenge oh. the the established bruce wayne portion of it and have their feud um i've wanted to see that since 1992 when kodai ken broke out on uh the animated series and i would just absolutely love to see him in a live action film i would also One episode like to see he splash that hard love it yeah um uh, also uh if they do a jokes and riddles storyline uh in the next movie uh, I would love to see the Riddler gain the ally of Calendar Calendar Man, and I would love mm. to see Joker get his greatest ally ever, not Harley Quinn. That's right, Condiment King. Dude, Condiment <laughs> King? I I want to see the you know the best Batman villain of all time, the Penny Pincher. Oh, yes. We all know it's Kite Man. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the most iconic batman villains because he he his first thing was to um was the big giant penny that was always shown in the bat cave yeah yeah yep. that would be cool well well like i said years. well look at it like this with the dc universe getting as bigger as it is and this universe i mean this batman on a technicality is part of the DCEU in the aspect that's Earth 2, not the actual Earth that most of the DCEU takes place in. Prime. Good change come Flashpoint. Come good change. We're going to see what happens. I mean, because right now, a lot of the movies just got changed. But uh, a lot of the, the newer movies, the release dates just got pushed back. Yeah, they My just theory? delayed uh, Flashpoint for six or seven months now. <sighs> My guess is they're changing. They're going to add an element where... Yeah. Because this Affleck is, it is a swan song. Michael Keaton is going to stay in this universe and be kind of this older Nick Fury like Batman. Batman but, Beyond, let's do it. Everybody right? wants it. Just fucking do it. But I think at the end of the day, 
this is he I think he's not gonna be so much that Batman, but I think like he's gonna ah, I don't want to give too much away, and I know we're over time, and I don't want to take too much time away. So basically, like I said, let's keep an eye out. We'll, when Flashpoint comes around, we'll cross this bridge and we'll burn it. Uh, but great. anyways, I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, listened to this show. This was a fantastic show. I had a great time doing it. Uh, I want to thank Ozzy for joining us at the Iceberg Lounge. Darth for uh, joining us as always. Um, Thank you, everybody who left the comment section. Mainly our VIP tonight is Michael Norris. Thank you so much for uh, doing what you do best and keeping the uh, conversation going. Um, I want to say tune in next week. We'll have more uh, content here at the Grown Ups Table. I also want to say, Destin, I know right now, or I should say Ozzy. Ozzy, right now you have a bunch of comedy shows going on. I know that you got some sort of uh, thing going on. Could you give us some details about that? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, March 14th and March 25th, I have shows at the Homestead Cherry Valley Public House in Newark, Ohio. Um, I'll be at the Funny Bone on the 16th. Uh, the tw- March 26th, I'm doing a show at a bar called Tap That Glass. Yes, really. <laughs> uh, in Newark as well. And then April 9th, I'm in the finals of a stand-up comedy contest also in Newark, Ohio. Nice. Uh, once gas prices uh, lower down, hopefully I'll be getting out of Newark for <laughs> more shows. Hey, it's so, all right, man. You got to gotta go where you got to go, you know? Yep. The gas prices is always lo- – I, I see the pump. It's like, what will break first, your body or your spirit? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's my spirit. It's 409 fuck. today. What? Four dollars and nine cents. Jesus. All right. Well, anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, you could catch me uh, live on the road. Just go to jessepipadel.com. Find the show you want to go to. I'll be there. Be sure to check out my YouTube page. Check out this YouTube page as well at the Grown Up Table. Like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the Grown Up Table. Thank you. And have a wonderful evening, everybody. Take care. Bye. Good night.